Okay, let's turn our Bibles to Book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 14, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26 and 27. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26 and 27. Title of the message is, You Need to Fear God Every Day. You Need to Fear God Every Day. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. Brother Nathan, can you pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you've given us, Lord. And thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ, a friend that we would always turn to. And even I look at through my own life, and Christ is all that I have. You're all that I could go to. You're the one that I could leave my burdens to. Many of us don't have family we could turn to. We, don't have, we have a few friends that we could really confide in just because of the hurt that we've been through. Lord, I think of the Lord Jesus Christ, whenever bitterness or something frustrated, I'm glad that I can look toward Jesus Christ and put some fear of me. And, Father, I know I say this often, but I don't want to be the person that walks away from you. Lord, I say this and I pray this, that if I were to ever walk away from you, I would still want to be used by you. And the testimony is that, that your chastisement would be upon me hard, that your wrath be upon me hard. That way that the people that could see that someone that walks away from the Lord is not an easy life. And my prayer has always been, Lord, if I'm to walk away from the God that I love, and to let the wrath, to let your wrath abide, your chastisement abide upon, upon me and let people see that this is what happens when you walk away from God. Lord, to walk away from the person that really loved me more than anything else is truly a tragedy. And I fear, I fear that, that you're the only thing that, that's the only thing that I fear is walking away from you. Lord, thank you for everything you've given us. Let us grab a hold of what it means to fear God so that we can live a holy life, mm -hmm. something that's acceptable to you. Lord, as Christians, you're all that we have. You're the only one that cares for our soul. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Before I go into it, you know, Pastor Shrive was talking about Dwight L. Moody, and I have some quotes from Dwight L. Moody. And I think, you know, special quotes from our forefathers of faith always gives us challenge and motivation. Dwight L. Moody said that so few grow because so few study. So few grow because so few study. You, know, you need to study the Word of God, I and mean, that's a given. Study, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the Word of truth. That's what the Bible says. So many of you who do not fear God, one of the reasons is because you don't study the Word of God. So you don't know God, right? If you don't talk to someone, if you don't have a relationship or build relationship with someone, you won't know that person. For many of you guys, God is someone who's just up there and you just look with awe and that's it. You don't have that personal relationship. Dwight El Moody also said, before we pray that God will fill us, I believe we ought to pray him to empty us. You need to like empty yourself. You're full of so many dirty, worldly, fleshly, devilish things in your mind. So you need to empty him and go to the Lord in prayer. And Dwight L. Moody said, there are many of us that are willing to do great things for the Lord, but few of us are willing to do little things. Too many of you wait to do great things for God when God's expecting you to start with little things. It's common saying, like babies, right? In order to take big steps, you gotta take small steps. That's same in your Christian life. And also, and we know Dwight L. Moody was a great soul winner. He said, so if we only lead one soul to Christ, we may set a stream in motion that will flow on when we are dead and gone. 
So there's emphasis on leading souls to the Lord. Imagine if you led one person to the Lord, and that person leads another person, and you know, the probability or multiplication, you know, their concepts, and it would just grow exponentially. And also, I like to say Bob Jones Sr. sayings as well. Bob Jones, this is a famous one. You and I heard it many times. It is a sin to do less than your best. It is a sin to do less than your best. What you love and what you hate reveal what you are. If you love the Lord and if you fear God, it will show what you love and what you hate. And through this message, you'll realize, if I fear God, it will show on what I love and what I hate. Jesus never taught man how to make a living. He taught man how to live. Too many people are inundated, always thinking about how to make a living. But our Lord taught man how to live. It is better to die for something than to live for nothing. What are you living for today? Are you living for something that's worthless? Or are you living for something that you can die for? And this one is one of my favorite because in this wicked society where black is white and white is black, where everything is going down the hill because America has forgotten and they refuse to fear God. It is never right to do wrong in order to get a chance to do right. Again, it is never right to do wrong in order to get a chance to do right. Too many times when you see these false preachers, false churches out there, they say as long as you give money to the church, it doesn't matter how you get it. Isn't it kind of ironic and sad that people are so happy to give money to the church when they win lottery? And that's not God's way. I go to gamble in Las Vegas so that I could win some money for God's ministry. God will not bless anything that comes from sinful ways. Then what does that tell you? Our world in, and especially in Christian society, there's no fear of God. When you think that you could gamble to support church ministry, you don't realize and you have forgotten how holy God is. God does not need your money. God doesn't need you. We forget. You and I need God. And you and I need to be fearful of God. Fear of the Lord is missing in our lives. That's why you commit sin every day. That's why you commit sin over and over. Same sin over and over because you don't fear God. If you were to fear God, you would have stopped that sin that you've been committing for years and years, long time ago. The only reason you haven't quit, especially say if you are saved, is because you don't fear God. You don't fear God every day. You don't fear God every other day. You don't fear God week to week. You just don't fear God. You only fear God when things go well. When the circumstances and your situation is good, oh, I fear you, Lord. However, when your environment, when your life gets turned upside down and there's a lot of peer pressure, what happens? You stop fearing God and you start fearing man, you start fearing everything else except God. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 28 through 29, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. You should be afraid of God, literally, because so many of Christian doctrine or so-called doctrine has been watered down by false preachers, liberal media, everybody saying God is love, God is love. They don't realize that our God is a consuming fire. 
You know, verse specifically says, serve God acceptably with reverence. They think reverence, showing respect to God is fearing God. That's not it. Godly fear. You are to be fearful of God. You are to be afraid of God. It's healthy fear. Why do you have car insurance? Because in case you get into an accident. Why do you stop at the red light? Because you're fearful that if you go to the red light, you pass through the red light, you pass through the stop sign, you're gonna get hit by another car. Why do kids don't do what their parents tell them not to do? Because they might get disciplined. You know, Deuteronomy 6.13 says, Thou shalt fear the Lord, thy God, and serve him. If you want to serve God, you need to have that fear. Fear of the Lord. That's one thing that everybody who's listening should realize and have it in their heart. When I fear God, it doesn't mean that I'm showing respect to him. That's reverence. When I fear God, I'm afraid of him because what he can do. When you have that healthy fear of God, then your life will be changed. This is a subject that many of you have heard many times. It's a ingra- I mean, ingrained in your brain, the fear of the Lord, the fear of the Lord. Fear of God is good for you. However, very few of you put it into action. Very few of you recognize it on your daily life. Very few of you actually fear God on a daily basis. It is sad because you and I are blessed with King James Bible. We come to a local church and we know all the right doctrines. But we stop there. You just know, but you never put it into action. That's why as Christians, Bible-believing Christians, you don't grow. Your knowledge is puffed up. But your life doesn't change. When you don't fear God, your life will never change. You're just as someone on their way to hell. You might have gotten saved. You know, that's a wonderful thing. However, afterwards, if you don't fear God, you are not going to be profitable as a child of God. Devil hates you. Let's, you know, put it out there. Devil hates child of God because you were once his child and you've been taken away forever. So what does devil want to do? Devil wants you to fail. Devil wants you to be no good. Devil wants you to be not used by God at all. So what does he do? He tries to tempt you with sweet things first, right? He gives you candy. He gives you chocolate. You know, when I say candy, I think Solara just turned her head around, right? So kids love candy, right? So devil gives you sweet things, things that you like. However, you're strong. You've grown in the doctrine. I mean, you have a close relationship with the Lord, and you say no to the devil. So what's his next step? He wants to get you scared. He wants you to be afraid of devil. He wants you to be afraid of everything else except God. He wants to put a fear in your heart, in your life. Through what? Through poverty, through sickness, through whatever, you know, mental breakdown, stress, whatever comes along your way. The devil wants to put a fear in your heart so that you won't be used by God, so that you will lose your testimony so that you will backslide to the point where he doesn't have to really worry about you. How many of you guys are in that state right now where you were fired up for the Lord after you got saved, you were gung-ho, you wanted to witness to people, you read your Bible, you work hard at everything, living a balanced Christian life. However, with devil's attacks coming along your way, one by one, day by day, you give up little by little, you put your resistance down, and you yield to temptation, and you have come to a point where you don't fear God anymore. Your life, we don't wanna hear what you say, we wanna see what your life tells us. Your life shows that you don't fear God. 
then what does that show you? You've been deceived by the devil, you have lost to devil, and guarantee you're not being used by God right now. How many of you guys think that in your current state, in your current Christian walk, that you are being used by God? Very few, huh? It's hard to even answer. Why? Because you backslid in so much, you've been fearing everything other than the Lord. You are constantly in fear of your security, you know, your prosperity, your health, and even your peace of mind that you stop fearing God. The Bible says in Psalms 917, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Proverbs 1434 says, Righteousness exalts as a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. And what does that show you? You have forgotten God. You have forgotten how fearful God is. You know, when a child has a healthy fear of his parents, they grow up to be a good child. Why do you think that our school system, public, private, anywhere, why is everything so messed up now? Back in the 19, early 1990s, even like early 1990s and 80s, you know, that's only like 20, 30 years ago. People have respect. They might not have been saved, but they have more sense. When they see elders, you know, they gave a right greeting. When people needed help, they gave help. However, generation got them so worse, where people are not fearing God, children are controlling parents. Children, you've seen too many clips. At Target, at Walmart, department store, they're telling their parents what to do. When parents don't listen, what happens? They go crazy. You know, they start yelling. And the worst cases that I'm seeing nowadays is they're calling their parents by their name. I mean, how dare they, right? They're like, Jane, buy me this. John, give me this. I mean, come on. Even like 10, 20 years ago, you know, they get a good discipline. Discipline has completely disappeared in America because they don't fear God. I mean, Bible says you need to discipline your kids with rod. Good chastisement is good for people's soul, especially for children. And as a children in this room, if you're not getting any discipline from your parents, you better go up to your parents. You don't fear God. You need to discipline me when I do something wrong because I fear God. Then you will convict your parents. Instead of trying to get away with all the sins that you've been committing, oh, I'm so glad my parents don't discipline me. You know, when you grow up, you're going to ruin yourself. And if you ever get married, if Lord Terry, you start your family, you're going to ruin your kids as well. That's why there's always difference between whether they're Christians or non-Christians who grew up in a disciplined family, not abusers, right? Then they will have a, you know, hateful feelings towards a parent. But right discipline, when you do something wrong, there's discipline comes along with it. People, you'll see that they live a more successful life than people who wasn't disciplined. Then you look at your life. I look at my life as well. As a child of God, how many times did you actually go to the Lord and say, Lord, I fear you. If I've done anything wrong, if I've sinned, please help me to realize. Because I fear you, I want to get right with you. Or are you just so happy that when you're living in sin, feel like God hasn't chastised you or disciplined you, and you feel like, wow, man, this must be my lucky day, you know. Lord hasn't chastised me for, you know, months, years. But Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever he soweth, that shall he also reap. 
It's growing. Aren't you scared? I mean, all those sins that you're committing, it's a seed. And what happens when you put a seed on the ground? You feel water it, and it starts growing. That little sin, that seed becomes what? This huge tree. Imagine if you have to reap that. Imagine what kind of pain and suffering you would have to go through. Many of you act like, good example, right, in the Bible, person who feared not God, but other things, Saul. 1 Samuel 15, 24 says, I feared the people. That was confession of Samuel. I mean, confession of Saul to Samuel. I fear the people. Are you fearing people? Are you fearing men? Are you fearing them because of your you know, status? Because of your class? Because you need to make more money? Because your life will get better if you fear men? What happened to Saul when he feared people? I mean, he went straight down to the toilet. I mean, he had a terrible ending to his life. Proverbs 29, 25 says, The fear of man bringeth a snare. Who do you fear today? Do you fear man or do you fear God? And again, when I say fear God, you are afraid of him and you are fearful of him because he's holy. Not because you show respect like this liberal watered down, you know, preachers will say. Do you really fear God from your bottom of your heart? Peter said in Acts 5.29, we ought to obey God rather than man. It has to show in your actions. What if God tests you and you are put in a situation? Do you agree with homosexuality? Do you agree with gay marriage? Where would you stand? It's against the word of God. It's Sodom and Gomorrah. What are you going to say? Because you're fearful of your classmates, you're fearful of your teachers and professors, are you going to stay still? It's amazing, when I was actually taking a poli-sci class, back when most of you guys weren't born, teacher actually asked that question. So we had a bunch of people in classroom, and then he asked, who agrees with you know, homosexuality? So maybe we had 30 students. 25 went to agree, and five actually, you know, were against it. It was me, one black guy, and then other people I don't remember. It was amazing because teacher said, you know, you're the only black guy I know who's conservative. But many of the people, the five people that were against it actually gave a reason. He said, why? And amazingly, all five of us said, because the Bible says it's wrong. Amen. And of course, 25 people are saying, oh, people rise, you know, all that stuff. However, how would you react in that kind of situation? We say we have freedom of speech. Free country. We have liberty as Christians. When you have chance to say the right things, when you have chance to glorify God, when you have chance to let the light shine through you, do you fear man and you stop it from happening? Or do you fear God and show that you fear God to other people? Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28, and fear not them which kill the body, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Think about it. Isn't God is 
fearful. He will put a soul in hell for our eternity. Yo, you have that God on your side. Why would you not recognize him? Why would you not worship him and praise him and be in fear of him always? Why? Answer simple. You don't fear God, but you fear other things. That's it. That's why you need to check your heart each day. Do I fear God or do I fear man? Do I fear God or do I fear what devil will do to me? Do I fear God or do I fear my job? Do I fear God or do I fear my education? Do I fear God or do I fear my health? When you fear God, everything will work itself out. The reason people don't get saved, number one, is because they don't fear God. There's no fear of God in their heart. That's why they're like, I don't need Jesus Christ. I don't believe in hell. Even if I do, loving God will never send the soul to hell for eternity. You don't know God. God is a consuming fire. God is a jealous God. God is just God. All people want to hear is lovely God. God of love, God of love. Was your parents always lovely to you? No. You know they loved you, right? However, if you did something wrong, especially if they were right parents, you get some spanky discipline. But did you hate them for correcting you? No. You loved them. And especially looking back years and years after, you realize how thankful you were that your parents, when you're going down the wrong path, you know, disciplined you, spanked you, you know, whatnot, to put you in the right path. If your physical parents do that, what do you think God would do? Holy, almighty God. You know, the Bible says, Acts 9.31, Christians under grace in the local church were walking in the fear of the Lord and were multiplied. God will multiply a church if a church walks in the fear of the Lord. Maybe you're the reason church doesn't grow. Why? Because there's no fear of God in your heart. Bible says what? Walking in the fear of the Lord and we're multiplied. Don't you know that you're the problem? Bob Jones Sr. said the problem is with you. It's not with me. It's not with someone next to you, your parents, your family. No, it's with you. And number one reason why is because you have no fear of God in your heart. When you fear the Lord, you will have that healthy, healthy spiritual and physical life. What does that mean? When you fear anything other than God, what happens? You're going to be fearful and it's going to negatively affect your health. You, f you fear about health. You fear about poverty. You fear about relationship. You fear about what people will do unto you. You fear about what government will do unto you. As brother suggested a song in the morning that we would need to get used to, you're full of anxiety. When you have full of anxiety, worry, what happens? Your health gets deteriorated. Your health gets worse. Have you ever seen someone who's always worrying, who's always fearful? live a healthy life? No. Their health gets worse and worse. That's what's happening to some of you. You're not as healthy like you used to be. When you first got saved, you were fearing the Lord and then walking in the Lord, walking with the Lord. However, now you're fearing everything other than the Lord. So your life is just going downhill. Your health is going downhill too. It doesn't matter whether you're young or old. 
you could be Isaac's age, or you could be one of the brothers and sisters age here, but if you don't fear God, I guarantee you, your health will get worse and worse and worse. However, you raise your hand, oh, I wanna get healthier, I wanna get healthier. Then you start fearing God. Show it in your life that I fear the Lord. Then I'll go over a few things. Then how do you show that you fear the Lord specifically? You know, due to time, I'll just say the verse and go over. Proverbs 8.13, you could write it down and you could review it. Proverbs 8.13 says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. You say, I want to fear the Lord. Then what does the Bible say? You need to hate evil. It's not what you think or what everybody else thinks or your relative, your cousin, your family. It doesn't matter what they think. God says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. I mean, do you hate evil? When you see anything going against the word of God, do you hate it? When people blaspheme God and Lord Jesus Christ, do you hate it? The way how the world is going downhill, you know, going against the word of God, going against holy God, do you hate it? Do you hate evil? Secondly, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Your wisdom does not begin with your education. Your wisdom, your wisdom does not begin with college degree, PhD, masters, it's not. Your wisdom begins with the fear of the Lord. You wanna become smarter? You wanna become wiser? You wanna increase your knowledge? You need to fear the Lord. And thirdly, from Proverbs 15, 16, better is little with the fear of the Lord than great treasure. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Then the fear of the Lord is a valuable thing. It's better than great treasure. So many of you guys want million dollars, billion dollars. You just want money, money, money. However, compared to the fear of the Lord, they're nothing but a dung. Fear of the Lord is a great treasure. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. So think about it. You want great, valuable thing? You need to fear the Lord. And also, Proverbs 14, 27 says, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. Do you want to live long and happy? You know, do you want healthy life? How many of you guys here, you're like, you know what? I don't like healthy life. You know, I don't want to live long. I thought those are like the suicide of mine, right? But as Christians, you're like, hey, you know, I want to live long, healthy, so that I could serve the Lord until the Lord comes back. You want to live like that? You need to fear the Lord. And this one I like. Psalms 19.9 says, the fear of the Lord is clean. Yeah. You know why America is full of junk on TV, on internet, all this you know, immortal stuff out there, all this dirty stuff, you know, dirty pictures, magazines, videos, everywhere, and they just accept it like nothing because there's no fear of the Lord. They don't fear God. However, you want to be clean. How many of you guys want to be full of dirt? How many of you guys want to be full of, you know, dirty spots on your body? How many of you guys want to just smell, I mean, smell like, you know, poo-poo all the time? Nobody does. Everybody wants to be in a clean, I guess, room, clean state. You want to be clean? You need to fear the Lord. Another one. Hebrews 12, 28 says, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Fear of the Lord is godly. You're like, I want to do godly things in my life. One of the things that you can do is what? Fear the Lord. 
as you've heard, fear of the Lord is the best thing that you can do in your life. Fearing God will keep you healthy. Fearing God will keep you out of trouble. Fearing God will make you more clean. Fearing God will make you smarter. Think about it. There's so many benefits to fearing God. You fear God because He's holy. You fear God because He saved you from hell. You fear God because who He is. But with that comes benefits. However, if you don't fear God, especially if you're saved, God will chastise you as a loving child. Just like Galatians 6 says, you are not going to get away with it. Your life full of fearing other things than God, your life full of fearing man, will eventually catch up and God will deal with you. And you are not going to like that day when you have to pay for your sins. That's why it is best that you get right with the Lord right now. God is a terrible God. You should be afraid of God. God is a consuming fire. Don't play around with God. You need to be fearful of Him. And it's a healthy fear. If you have disappointed Him, if you have sinned against Him, you have to get right with the Lord. That's why the Bible says if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And God is full of mercy and grace. He's a fair God, terrible God, God of judgment. But just like what other people do say, he's God of love and charity as well. Then you need to get right with the Lord. And those of you who's playing with fire, where you did not fear God and you don't care or you didn't think about your eternity, I mean, today, right now, now is the day of salvation. You have to get right with the Lord. How? You have to realize that you are a sinner on your way to hell. You have to have willingness to turn from sin and turn to God. Believe that Jesus is God and accept Him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. What does the Bible say? That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you are fearful of man, if you are fearful of your church, if you are fearful of your poverty situation, health, and especially if you are fearful of burning in hell for eternity, today is the day that you need to get saved. And you can get saved when you trust Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone as your Lord and Savior. Every eye closed and every eye closed and head bowed. For those of you who do not know where you're going after you die, if you realize that you are on your way to hell, you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, and you want him to save you from hell, in this prayer, childlike heart, ask the Lord to come into your heart and save you from hell. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I am willing to turn from sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, with all my heart, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior and Lord. I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray with all of your heart, realizing that you are a sinner on your way to hell, believing that Jesus Christ died for all your sins and received him in your heart as your Lord and Savior. Bible says you have eternal life. Bible says, he that hath the Son has life, he that has not the Son of God has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. But as many as received him, did you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? 
But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You are a new creature. You have been saved from eternal lake of fire, and now you're a child of God, and you're sealed with the Holy Ghost, Ephesians 1.13. Those who got saved right now or those who's been saved for a long time or a short period of time, now we have to put it into action. The fear of God, you and I know, in our brain. Now it's time for you to put it into action. Let your life, let your heart, let your conversation show that you fear God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you for saving us from hell. We don't deserve it, but you loved us beyond human comprehension. And you saved us from hell by sending your only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray that we will not forget how healthy and important fear of God is in our lives, Lord. Help us to fear you, Lord. You'll make us clean. You'll make us healthy. You'll make us more blessed, Lord God. And I pray for especially Pastor Shrive, Lord, please be with him. All the administration stuff, Lord, please resolve it as soon as possible. According to your will, Lord God, please get rid of his cancer and be with all those who couldn't make it because of health issues, Lord. You're the great physician, Lord. Please heal them as well. I pray that you continue to protect us from devil's attacks and help us to have a testimony where it shows that we fear you no matter what the devils do, how they attack us. I pray that we will always commit to fear you instead of fearing man. Bless the rest of the day, Lord, and even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>